to you from the Forge of Freedom studio in the heart of America, a podcast dedicated to preserving freedom and inspiring personal success. Freedom is born and lives through you, the individual, and it dies in the shadows of tyranny, motivating our listeners to become well-rounded, freedom-minded people with the body of an athlete, the mind of a stoic, and the spirit of a warrior. The Tree of Liberty lives on through you, the Forge of Freedom. And now here's your host, Alex Uli. Hello and welcome to another edition of the Forge of Freedom podcast. I'm your host, Alex Uli, and this is episode 68 of the Forge of Freedom. If you can keep your head when all about you are losing theirs and blaming it on you, if you can trust yourself when all men doubt you, but make allowance for their doubting too, If you can wait and not be tired of waiting, or being lied about, don't deal in lies, or being hated, don't give way to hating, and yet don't look too good nor talk too wise. If you can dream and not make dreams your master, if you can think and not make thoughts your aim, if you can meet with triumph and disaster, and treat those two impostors just the same. If you can bear to hear the truth you've spoken, twisted by knaves to make a trap for fools, or watch the things you gave your life to broken, and stoop and build them up with worn-out tools. If you can make one heap of all your winnings, and risk it on one turn of pitch and toss, and lose, and start again at your beginnings, and never breathe a word about your loss. If you can force your heart and nerve and sinew to serve your turn long after they are gone, and so hold on when there is nothing in you except the will which says to them, hold on. If you can talk with crowds and keep your virtue, or walk with kings nor lose the common touch. If neither foes nor loving friends can hurt you, if all men count with you but none too much, if you can fill the unforgiving minute with sixty seconds worth of a distance run, yours is the earth and everything that's in it, and which is more, you'll be a man, my son. If is a poem by English writer and poet Rudyard Kipling, uh, who lived between 1865 and 1936. And the poem was written around the year 1895. And it's an example of Victorian era stoicism. And the poem was written in the form of paternal advice to Kipling's son, John. And if you've been watching the podcast by video, you'll notice there's a big if uh, behind me here, and it's the poem in the form of the word if. Uh, and it's a it's a poem that I printed out and my, my parents actually had framed for me when I graduated from law school. But it's a poem that has had an impact on me for quite a few years. I remember hearing it for the first time in 2007. And admittedly, I've never been a huge poetry fan, but I've accumulated and saved and internalized the sentiment and the meaning of a few poems over the years, if by Rudyard Rudyard Kipling being one of those. But in 2007, uh, during high school, I attended the Summer Leadership Academy at the United States Military Academy at West Point, and I was introduced to the poem there, and the, upon the first time reading it, I remember that it just sort of, it grabbed me. It, 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 it shook something inside of me that just felt so true. And I never really revisited the poem. I, I remembered it, but never, never read it, never revisited it until uh, I I sort of rediscovered it again after college. And and I've come to appreciate this poem, along with a few others, especially the poems 
that sort of speak to to the struggles and the, the beauties and, and the good things in life. And I think that poetry is something that can give you strength. It certainly gives me strength. And it can give you the courage to to walk the difficult road that we encounter in life oftentimes. And I wanted to share a few of these poems with you uh, because I, they might be helpful to you like they have been to me. And I wanted to start with If because it's it's my my favorite poem. Obviously, I have it framed on my, my bookshelf here, uh, but I've got a couple others I'd like to, to share with you as well. But before we leave If, uh, I want to point out just a few things about it. If deals with the very real difficulties of life, and it, and it seems prudent to, to share it now when there are so many things going on in the world and so so many people face, facing so much strife and worry and difficulty. And like I said, I hope that this poem, I hope you'll save it. I hope you'll read it again and again. And I hope that it can help inspire you and, and help you summon the courage to carry on, even through intense difficulty and, and to keep your head about you. Uh, as the poem says, even when those around you have lost theirs. If it is an in inspirational poem, it provides advice on how one should live. Like I said, this is a uh, a poem to the to Kipling's son, John. And the poem takes the reader, takes us through various ways in which we can rise above adversity that will almost certainly be thrown our way at some point. And, and, th and throughout the poem, we are given both a positive and a negative scenario, uh, multiple positive and negative scenarios, along with a prescription for how one should conduct oneself, including lessons in humility, willpower, composure, and the virtuous life. The poem, what I think partly what I like about it is that it has almost a, a mathematical proof about it with its if-then structure. And, and Kipling leaves the, the then until the final two lines, revealing to his son the result of the formula is that he will not only have the world at his fingertips, but he will also be a man. And as I was preparing for this episode, I knew I wanted to share uh, this poem, but I, I also came across an article uh, on the intellectual takeout by Annie Holmquist, and I'll link to this in the show notes. But in the article, she mentions... Uh, Lords of the Earth, which is a biography by Don Richardson about a man named Stanley Albert Dale. And Richardson notes that as a young boy, Dale memorized Kipling's poem in school, clinging to its words to help him through a troubled childhood of abuse and bullying. And as he grew older, Dale returned to the poem and began to analyze it. And as he did, he, he saw connections between the ideal man that Kipling in his poem sort of identified and Jesus Christ. And like Kipling's ideal man, Christ was blamed and doubted and lied about and hated. But he was humble. He was meek. And in the biography, Richardson says, uh, throughout 2,000 years of history, Stanley reflected, Christ has witnessed the twisting of his truth, particularly by unscrupulous ecclesiastics who make traps for fools. Doggedly, he risks the heap of all his winnings in history upon the faltering witness of followers in each new age. And often, in human estimation at least, he loses and starts again at his beginnings, never 
departing from his original purpose. All in preparation for the climax of history and the final verdict, he is destined to rest from both critics and enemies. And Stanley gazed intently at the open Bible before him. Surely Kipling must have used Christ as the model for his ideal man. Like I said, Annie Holmquist, this comes from an article by Annie Holmquist over at the Intellectual Takeout, which is a great, great website with lots of uh, fantastic articles. I encourage you to go check it out. But she says, uh, today, Jesus Christ is, is still maligned and his followers detested. Yet in his comparison between Kipling's ideal man and Christ, Dale hits upon something very important. We can look at this poem, be inspired by it like I am, and do our best to pull ourselves up by our bootstraps, gritting our teeth as the world around us condemns our ideas and actions and convictions of truth, but we can never do it perfectly. We can, however, know the one who did do it perfectly, that ideal man who knows all our trouble, troubles and will hold our hands helping us navigate through them. So whether you're a, a believer in Jesus Christ, uh, I, I think it, part of the point here is that we need a model. We need something to look up to, some ideals, some virtues. And I talked about uh, this on a few occasions on the podcast. Uh, one I'd point, point you to in particular is Aristotle's 12 virtues. But But we need these guiding principles. And I think that's what is so often lost in society today. We, we live in such a prosperous world, uh, but we often live one with great moral depravity. And I think that for us to flourish, for us to be happy, we have to have this sort of stoic mindset, but also a mindset that seeks the good. And uh, to have these models, the sort of the man that Kipling identifies in his poem, if, or the model that we have in Jesus Christ, uh, I think that we need those sorts of figures to look up to. All right, so I have, uh, I hope I hope you enjoyed the poem there, if. Now you know what that is sitting on the bookshelf behind me. Uh, but I have two more that I routinely uh, look back to read and sort of internalize. Uh, and that's Desiderata by Max Ehrman and, uh, or Ehrman, I should say, and What Will Matter by Michael Josephson. And first I'll, um, go through Desiderata by Max Ehrman. Go placidly amid the noise and the haste and remember what peace there may be in silence as far as possible without surrender, be on good terms with all persons. Speak your truth quietly and clearly and listen to others, even to the dull and the ignorant. They too have their story. Avoid loud and aggressive persons. They are vexatious to the spirit. If you compare yourself with others, you may become vain or bitter, for always there will be greater and lesser persons than yourself. Enjoy your achievements as well as your plans. Keep interested in your own career, however humble. It is a real possession in the changing fortunes of time. Exercise caution in your business affairs, for the world is full of trickery. But let this not blind you to what virtue there is. Many persons strive for high ideals. And everywhere, life is full of heroism. Be yourself. Especially, do not feign affection. Neither be cynical about love, for in the face of all aridity and disenchantment, it is as perennial as the grass. Take kindly the counsel of the years, gracefully surrendering the things of youth. Nurture strength of spirit to shield you in sudden misfortune, but do not distress yourself with dark imaginings. Many fears are born of fatigue 
and loneliness. Beyond a wholesome, beyond a wholesome discipline, be gentle with yourself. You are a child of the universe, no less than the trees and the stars. You have a right to be here. And whether or not it is clear to you, no doubt the universe is unfolding as it should. Therefore, be at peace with God, whatever you conceive him to be. And whatever your labors and aspirations in the noisy confusion of life, keep peace in your soul. With all its sham, drudgery, and broken dreams, it is still a beautiful world. Be cheerful. Strive to be happy. And then finally, What Will Matter by Michael Josephson. So what will matter? How will the value of your days be measured? What will matter is not what you bought, but what you built. Not what you got, but what you gave. What will matter is not your success, but your significance. What will matter is not what you learned, but what you taught. What will matter is every act of integrity, compassion, courage, or sacrifice that enriched, empowered, or encouraged others to emulate your example. What will matter is not your competence, but your character. What will matter is not how many people you knew, but how many people will feel a lasting loss when you're gone. What will matter is not your memories, but the memories that live in those who loved you. What will matter is how long you will be remembered, by whom and for what. Living a life that matters doesn't happen by accident. It's not a matter of circumstance, but of choice. Choose to live a life that matters. So there you go. Those are three of my favorite poems. Uh, I'm not I'm not an expert in poetry. I know very little of of poet uh, poetry. Uh, but I can tell you that these three poems, when I read them, they they touched me, and I remember them, and I read them on a regular basis, and they give me the the courage, the strength, the humility, the power to move on and to face life and to, to enjoy life. They inspire me to, to look for the good. And I thought that there was another great uh, contribution at the, uh, the intellectual takeout by Jeff Minnick. Uh, and I'll link to his article in the show notes as well, but I love, I love what he has to say here. He says, and he's talking about poetry and, and he references if by Rudyard uh, Kipling, as a matter of fact, but, He's talking about poetry more broadly, and he says, In addition to imbuing us with the beauty of our native tongue, poetry acts as an interior flame that can inspire us during hardship long after we have left the schoolyard. Rudyard Kipling's If, for example, which I had certain classes put to memory, abides in the hearts of those students even today, whispering, perhaps, encouragement when they most have need of it. Learn some poetry by heart, and its words, rhythms, images, and meaning become like that muscle beating away in your chest, a life-giving part of you until the end of your days. So with that, thank you for, for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed this, the show. I hope you enjoyed these poems that I've shared with you, and I, I hope that they become their, their rhythms, their words, their images, their meaning becomes that muscle that Jeff Minnick identifies beating away in your chest, that life giving part of you until the end of your days. If you did enjoy the show, don't forget to like and subscribe to help us spread the message of freedom. And until next time, remember. You are the Forge of Freedom. Thanks for listening to this episode of Forge of Freedom. Be sure to subscribe wherever you heard this podcast so you never miss a future episode. For more information or to connect with Alex, you can go to forgeoffreedom.com or follow him on Twitter at Forge of Freedom. Until next time, remember, you are the Forge of Freedom. <laughs>